Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So we just finished discussing uh, glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and the pentose phosphate pathway. So now we're going to continue on um, with our uh, metabolic pathways and we're going to start discussing the citric acid cycle. Um, let's just jump right on in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do just a quick overview again of the stages of cellular respiration so that we have an idea of where it is that we are in the big picture and then we'll actually start to get into the citric acid cycle and the conversion of the pyruvate that was formed during glycolysis uh, into acetyl-CoA and then of course in the next lesson we'll go ahead and start the citric acid cycle. Okay, so the stages of cellular respiration. So let's see, the stages of cellular respiration. And what we mean by that is just the conversion of glycolysis to pyruvate, ultimately to acetyl-CoA, the citric acid cycle, all the way down. And we produce the CO2 and we reduce um, oxygen via all those electrons that we took away from all of these, you know, um, oxidative steps. So let's see here. So we started with glucose. That was our first step. From glucose, the glycolysis, we went to pyruvate. So we've already taken care of this first step. That was the glycolysis. So the pyruvate, acetyl-coenzyme A. Now from here, the acetyl-CoA actually enters the citric acid cycle Okay, and over here, later on, when we actually discuss fatty acid catabolism and amino acid catabolism, the breakdown of those things, they also end up funneling into acetyl-CoA and entering the citric acid cycle. So I'll just go ahead and draw that this way. Okay, something like that. Okay, so now let me go ahead and put over here NADH and FADH2. I'll go ahead and put a little rectangle around that. And then over here, I'll go ahead and put the electron transport chain. The final step in cellular respiration, what oxidative phosphorylation, it's going to be our final culminating step. Um, of this thing called cellular respiration, the, the, the ultimate breakdown of the things that we ingest, whether it's fatty acids, amino acids, and carbohydrates. So amino acids from transport chain. And let me go ahead and put a little square around that. So here in the electron transport chain, what happens is this thing called oxidative phosphorylation, different from what we talked about earlier when we talked about glycolysis. Um, it was, remember we talked about the formation of ATP? That was substrate level phosphorylation. This is where most of the ATP that's produced in the body is produced. Uh, it's called oxidative phosphorylation. So ADP plus PI is converted into ATP. That is one of the major products. All of this is designed to produce ATP so that ATP can run the body because ATP is the energy currency. The other thing that happens is that oxygen gas is actually reduced to water. So H2O, right? Oxygen. Normally, it has an oxidation state of zero. H2O has an oxidation state of negative two. All those electrons that we took away from the breakdown of all these things, the carbohydrate, the fatty acid, the amino acids, they end up coming and reducing oxygen. That's what they do. And in the process, of course, during these processes, CO2 is also released. So now let's go ahead and just follow the electron path here. I'm gonna do the electron path in red. So we've got some electrons from the citric acid cycle electrons from the citric acid cycle in the form of the NADH and the FADH2. In these cycles, in the glucose to pyruvate, pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and all of the citric acid cycles um, reactions that we're gonna talk about, NADH is produced, FADH2 is produced. All of things come here and they actually release their electrons. Once they collect all of the electrons from the oxidations that they've done, 
They take their electrons and they give them over to the electron transport chain and that's what takes care of this. So let's just follow the flow of electrons. Remember, we had some NADH formed here, so some electrons come here, and then from here there are going to be some electrons that come over here. Uh, from here there are going to be some electrons that come here. From here there are going to be electrons that come here. So that's what these NAD and FAD coenzymes do. They're electron carriers. They hold all of the electrons by oxidizing all of these things, and then they dump their electrons onto the electron transport chain so that those high energy electrons can do work. The work that they do is they actually produce ATP and they reduce oxygen to water. That's what the body does. Okay, so this is the general scheme of what we're doing. What we've done is we've taken care of glycolysis. Today, what I'm going to talk about in this lesson is we're going to discuss the conversion of the pyruvate that was formed during glycolysis. We're going to talk about its transformation into acetyl-CoA by an absolutely extraordinary enzyme. What this enzyme does will, it, it really, it's truly fascinating what this does. It's unbelievable is what it does. Um, so we're going to talk about that conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. And then in the next lesson, we're going to start discussing the movement of acetyl-CoA into the citric acid cycle. And then later on in subsequent lessons, we're going to discuss the breakdown of fatty acids. We're going to discuss the breakdown of the amino acids. And we will have covered this part right here. And then later when we get to oxidative phosphorylation after that, we'll discuss this part right here the transfer of the electrons onto the electron transport chain, and then we will have completed our basic catabolic movement. So again, we did the glucose to pyruvate. Today we're going to do pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So let's get started.